All right, we're finally getting out into the wilderness to do some real work on the trail. And we're gonna bring the horses with us down here. That's Jaeger, the black one, and he's one of our Mustangs. And I have to go wrangle him and his buddy Jigs and get them down to the bottom so we can get them in the trailer there. Uh, it's kind of hard to even get down the hill here. They know what's happening <laughs> and they aren't going to be cooperative. Sometimes this turns into quite a chore taking multiple hours, but we have a plan. boy. Hey. Remember me? Nope. No food. Oh, there's your buddy. All right. And one here is Jigs, and he's a real good horse. He'll cooperate, probably. Hey, boy. Good boy. All right, Jaeger. You see what's happening here? We're going somewhere. Come on. Christ, Jaeger, what the fuck are you doing, man? You're scaring the shit out of me. Oh, fuck. Ooh. All right. Let's go, ponies. We're going to the woods. I guess we're already in the woods. Get out of the way.
<laughs> All right, we got them. He's like, I'm coming with you. <laughs> no, nope, sorry, bud. walk through the whole thing. Yep. That's cool. Start from the bottom. Pull it up tight. I usually just kind of grab right here. There's a little, a lot of people just bring it straight over and there's this weird awkward crease here. Mm -hmm. Just take your hand, pull it up like that. Just hold it there. Okay. And, and, then, then, and pull it straight over. Cool. It gives that like clean edge. Bring it over. I always tuck this because I don't like these pop out. doesn't matter usually what side you start with unless you have something like poking out of the pack. You got that edge there. Just want to keep that tucked in. Bring it over. Make it clean. Look, make it look nice. Take the top, I usually just go like this. Just put it in, push down, and make like kind of a nice little neat top of your package. And just fold it under like that. It's not perfect, but the rope will just tie it all in. So, I take my rope here. Make sure that you're bending over the top. A lot of people put it this way, then just pulls out. It doesn't actually hold. So you need that bite. <laughs> mm, copy. Yep. A lot of people make that mistake. If you're in a rush, it's easy to make. With that board under there, it just gives me just a little bit of rigidity. And I make sure that this is all the way at the top. And I just. Give it a pull and I want it right at that top of the pack. I don't want it down here and I don't want it up there. So I'm gonna do my half hitches. So I'm just holding it with the weight of the pack there, throwing it over, just doing a half hitch and then just turning it, dragging it around, pulling it. You can see the board's kind of like awkwardly there. You might your board and get it. Yeah. Yep. There you go. And then these ropes will just hold that board in place. Here's something I learned the hard way. 
can let the pack do all the work for you. And with tightening, you can just drag it over to the right on your first half hitches, and it'll just keep tightening it. Not a lot of rope. I'll probably do more than three. Usually just do three. Be a couple close together. Anytime you can put a loop up or something, it won't catch on the branch. There we go. 100 pounds of food ready to go. <laughs> and I'm sweating like a fucking dog. Well, mine doesn't look quite as good, but. Break free. <laughs> All right, we're getting loaded up for our first and probably only pack trip for the year. So when I'm putting this on, I want to be real gentle. Sometimes when it's heavy, it's kind of tough, but I'm gonna just slowly put it up on her back and just kind of watch her demeanor, watch her ears, see if she's kind of dancing, if I need to back off and set the pack back down. Right. <clears throat> so, let's see if I can lift this up. So. I kind of just gently put it on her. Get it up, inch it up. Grab my basket, bring it up, grab the rope down here, cinch it down. So once I got it like that, I can just hold this relax because it's heavy <laughs> now I got to get my weight and see how the saddle shift in there yep so I have it a little too loose so I'm gonna ask you to go on the other side and just hold the saddle down like pull it down it's actually looking pretty decent probably just leave it for now <clears throat> you can adjust it in a little what bit. do you think Molly how's it feel the parade and see how he looks. Just pull it up and kind of put my finger in the crease of his mouth. Pull it in. Tickle him in the tongue. Yep. Pull his hair out.
we're walking them for a little while get them all uh, back in the rhythm No any more water? All right, my pretty ponies, dinner time. <laughs> it's because he's an asshole and he'll run. So we're camping. This is in the uh, area of Corral Creek. This is my favorite campsite in the lower stretch of the river here. Got some clouds moving in. We've got thunderstorms predicted for the next three days. So this is what we did as a safety net against our horses running away, which is very much a thing. Uh, it's happened to me once before and landed multiple times. But if they get an opportunity, they will bolt. They will take off. They're really herd bound, so one horse isn't going to take off. But if the group at any point is not tied up or not highlined or hobbled, they will almost certainly make a run for the trailhead. It's pretty incredible. They know how to get back to where they came from, uh, pretty much no matter what. And they'll run 20, 30 miles all the way back to the trailhead. We're only five away here, which wouldn't be the worst thing, but it would be the end to any productive work for the next two or three days because we'd have to go get them and bring them up here and then we'd have one day and the whole trip wouldn't really be worth it for one day of work in here. Oh. <laughs> Don't get tied up. Perfect timing, yeah. So this is appropriately called a hobble. And it keeps them from running away. Hopefully. And leaving our ass <laughs> in the wilderness. Don't leave us. Hopefully. Here we have a super delicious and pretty common berry. This is called a thimble berry. It's related to raspberries and blackberries. It tastes pretty similar to a raspberry in a lot of ways, but it's unique. 
Oh no, my thimbleberry. Okay, well, this one I can't drop. But they call it a thimbleberry. I can't really tell, but it kind of comes off in a cup shape. And you could almost wear it as a thimble. Ooh. They're super good this year. We had a bunch of late rain. And all the berries are doing really well. What you mean, Landon? Yes, it is. This By the is way, the true. This is the true look of a trail dog. This is a real trail crew. <laughs> Twelve abs. Molly's gonna like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
big black horse has a bad habit of wanting to leap across entire creeks. Make it to China eventually. Roll. Well, we've got another big tree. These ones uh, can take some time. That last one took us probably two hours, largely due to the fact that the heart was completely rotten and uh, just filled with a bunch of fingers of wood remaining that kept getting caught in between the teeth of the saw. But this definitely gets more complicated than just cutting wood. This one's hanging for us, which means we'll want to drop and the cut will want to open. Got the hog. Woo! Bring it.
and we have this big old barber chair, son of a bitch, that we have to cut. We were able to get around it by going right up the hill here with all the animals yesterday, but this tree is going to be a big, big chore. Uh, it's not touching the ground anywhere between the creek or the river and right here. Which means this whole portion right here is suspended above the ground and the weight of that log is going to be pulling it towards the ground, right? And so it's going to be stretching the fibers on the underside of the log in a U-type shape, if you can imagine that. Which means that the fibers on top are going to be pushed together. And so that's going to cause bind. And as we put the saw in and start pulling, those two uh, pieces of wood that we create with the cut are then going to start to push into each other because of the tension on the fibers on the underside of the log. And so uh, it's going to pretty much effectively just pinch our saw to the point that we can't pull it. And then the other issue here, well, one other issue is footing. The, the trail here totally sucks. There's really nowhere to even stand and cut the thing. And then on top of that, uh, all the trees that are coming down around here are one old and two fire hardened. Most of them died in or since the North Fork fire which happened 20 years ago or so. In about 10, 12 years after a fire, all the trees uh, that were, you know, sound and fire hardened start to come down. Fungus gets to them and they begin to rot and start falling. Uh, and that's what happened with this one. And so the wood is very hard and it's all split which just creates a whole bunch of edges for the teeth of your saw to, you know, like catch on. Change of plan. This tree could possibly take all day, or we could possibly not even get it done. So we're gonna build a reroute, just right up and around it, uh, to buy us time. So now we're cutting out roots, and then we're gonna build some tread and just bring it right down here. Okay, this is what we've done. It's kind of like a staircase. We're calling it Molly's Staircase, named after Molly, the greatest mule ever. Jewel of the North Fork. Jewel of the North Fork. But yeah, it will get us out of here safely and people can pass. And it buys us time to come back and cut this tree at a later date when we plan to. Because we have one day today, and if we don't finish it and we spend all day there, that's stupid. So we're gonna continue onward and get that later. Landon, would you like to demonstrate Molly's staircase in action? There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Took about one hour. Improvising. Yep. Just make it work. <laughs> this is my favorite part of like wilderness work in particular, frankly. When you get to just do shit with what you got on hand and make it work. Yeah, we spend all day on that and not even get it done. Get our saw pinched and get pissed. We'll get over, do this for now and get our portion through. Yep. <laughs> yep, win win. I was sitting right there a minute ago and a bee flew out of nowhere and just stung me right in the face, which is the fourth time this week. Okay, 
Okay, the crosscut saw. This thing weighs about seven or eight pounds. And if that sheath comes off, it's extremely sharp and it will slice you open and you won't even feel it. Um, carrying it, especially when you're like carrying it, walking 10 miles in a day, like we do sometimes, is a real pain in the ass. But I do have one trick. Okay, and this is what you do. You fold it over and a loop on itself and you wear it like a, a fashion accessory. The handles have to be positioned in a specific way and you cannot let them come apart. Because if they do, this thing has probably 30 pounds of tension in it right now. And like I said, it's razor sharp and it'll slit my throat and I would bleed out in the woods, which wouldn't be the worst way to die. Sure is pretty here. So this is what happens when you either don't really know what you're doing all that well, <laughs> which I kind of think is the case yeah. here, frankly. And it's, they're using a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were using a chainsaw too, illegally. But pretty much what happened here is they didn't account for the fact that this whole chunk of tree right here is smooth and bare on a smooth slope. There's nothing holding it in the ground at all. So it wants to slide downhill, and the second you make a cut there, or there, or there, or there, or there, or there, uh, the weight from the uphill starts to push down, like you can see right here. And like I keep talking about, it pinches your saw or binds your saw, and you can't move your bar or cut anymore and it, but the, the worst thing that can happen is you get your saw completely stuck in the tree and you either have to try to chop it out or you have to leave it and that's very good but so pretty much somebody did some uh, clandestine home done trail work with their chainsaw and well this is what they left us and now we're going to repair a small area of tread over here, kind of some spots a little bit like this. It's hard to really see in the camera, but this is very narrow, steep, loose tread, just built onto a talus rock, falling down the hill. And coming in here on the horses when they're all loaded down, it was pretty sketchy. My horse lost its footing and one foot went down the hill. So we're going to repair that real quick. We're going to just clean up the trail before we come back out and then we'll head upstream. Horse Highway.
and five, ten minutes later, we have a much better hard pack bench for the horses to walk across. It's still pretty narrow tread, but that's okay. Well, today turned out to be a good and productive day, all in all. We were really glad we chose to reroute the trail instead of cut that log. Uh, we ended up making it further than we had even hoped to coming in here. And yeah, my phone died, so I didn't get to show you all the work we did, but we moved probably about 15, 20 logs, uh, including the smaller ones, maybe only like 10 bigger ones. And now we got some pretty nice uh, thunderstorms rolling in. And I'm just looking forward to a quiet night at camp. We're both pretty beat. Hey Landon, how you doing, man? Doing good. <laughs> Staying warm. <laughs> uh. That's a pretty good hail. Yeah, there's some big chunks. Uh, well, my phone died during the work day, and I didn't film any of our pack out from our Dixon Bar camp where we were. But we're out here back at the compound getting ready to go back out. <clears throat> we got all our pretty ponies ready to go. We also got the old wilderness manager from this district who's out here with his own horses. You can see his horse trailer down there. And uh, he's going to do a little bit of work with our Mustangs, try to make them a little bit more manageable. Uh, the one I was riding was jumping around and tried to buck me yesterday. And we're also going to continue clearing down and try to connect in with uh, where we got earlier this week. There's about four miles left to connect in Granite Trail to the point we stopped and we should be able to do that in a day or two and then start moving further upriver.